historian and I work on late 19th century uh, rhetorical culture, which is maybe a little bit cryptic. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to research the public opinion um, at that time on various issues. So polar topics are a part of that. Because at that time people were actually a lot, speaking a lot. Whether it's worth, for example, um, exploring the North Pole. And they said no, unfortunately. Um, since I was a child, I was really interested in regions, in cold regions, like Iceland, Greenland and that stuff, Northern mm -hmm. Hemisphere. And then I went to New Zealand and I thought, well, the Antarctic is cold as well, why not do that? And then it just coincided with my historical research because I realized, well, people in the 19th century were pretty keen on both regions, the North Pole and the South Pole. So um, that's how it happened. Actually, there are there's a region that's similar to the dry valleys in Antarctica and um, we went through that region by car and I've never been to a desert or any region where there are no people and we were in the car, three girls, you know <laughs> and when we were in the middle of that region I realized well what happens if the car breaks down we don't have enough water we don't have warm clothes etc and then I get a little bit freaked out and I realized, okay, that's how it must be like in a complete empty space. And that's my, I think that's one of the most intense experiences I had in Iceland.